In this session, we're going to be looking at setting up Snowflake with Bimalflex. So before we start, let's just go ahead and um, configure the Snowflake components that we need. So you're going to need to log into your Snowflake um, portal here, this is mine here, and then you go to the help, and we're going to go download a client, this sort of snowy scale client here for Windows. Um, so you download that guy, um, and then you're also going to be downloading the um, the Snowflake uh, ODBC drivers from the repository here. So if you go to ODBC, you want to get probably the, you want to get the Win32, uh, the latest one, and you also want to get the Win64, the latest one. Download both of those, install Snowy Scale, and install the ODBC drivers for Windows, and then you're ready to use the, um, Snow, Snowflake um, in Bimalflex. So after you've downloaded Snowy Scale, you want to go install it and probably the best place to go is to get the latest installation is to go to the Snowflake documentation. They've got a whole section here on Snowy Scale, um, downloading and, and everything here. But um, the key thing is once you've or after you've um, installed Snowy Scale, the key thing to remember is actually that you will have in Windows, you'll have this path, your user profile dot Snowy Scale. And there is other things that you need to um, configure there, but for now, Let's just use this again. If you're doing a server deployment, you may need to move your files around. And if you can look here, this is the percentage user profile that's no scale. And I'll show you in Bimalflex where that is configured in a section. But you've now at this stage, you've installed your ODBC drivers um, and both the 32 and 64 bit, and you've installed Snowy Scale and you have this file. You've verified that you can run this file. So if I just go grab that and I go into Windows here. Um, to this one here and I'll just drop it in there effectively I will have that config file is the one we're looking for we're going to look for a little bit but you you're going to go to your file there you should be able to now see this dot snowy scale if I go up a path here you'll see that I've got the snowy scale there okay that's kind of where we need to be at the moment so let me go ahead and show you the, the ODBC installations um, this works the same for um, 32 bit and 64 bit you, you probably want to do both of those so you go into your 64-bit uh, here, um, and you can do the 32-bit. Now, you're only going to need this ODBC drivers um, if you want to import metadata from Snowy Scale or from Snowflake, but it's good to set them up. So effectively, you go ahead and you add one, and you give it whatever name you want. So I've added one. I've just called it SFL DW. And here are the things that you need to configure. You're going to need to configure your username. You can pop your password in, um, and then the server is, um, you know, um, effectively, if you go to your Snowflake account, you can just grab pretty much that, but there is your server, okay, and um, where's the thing? So that's your server name there, uh, the database, which is going to be the, the, the database that you've set up here. Uh, you can have multiple databases, so you could have had multiple databases there. Um, I normally use my schema as public, uh, the compute warehouse, which is the, the warehouse that you are connecting to, so what is the warehouse name? Um, and that's really all I need, all I configure. I leave the rest of the stuff here, but you need to go through the Snowflake configuration. So but effectively, I set up a 32-bit and a 64-bit one like that. Hit OK. And there you have your two, your ODBC drivers configured now. Um, so let's now go and actually look at how you use this inside of Bimalflex. Before we head into Bimalflex, what you will need to do is also go into the config file. So you'll go to that user profile. Um, where you have your uh, user profile, Snowy Scale, and this config file. I normally just edit this in Notepad++, and we need to set that up. So in Notepad++, um, right at the top, it kind of gives you a template of what you need to do. Um, and what I do is I give it the connection name, and this is important. We're going to need this. You can have multiple connections here. Um, and again, if you, if you look at this, you're going to go and pop in your account name, your username. The same as with the ODBC, the database name, um, and public. So by the way, this um, there is limited um, uh, variables that we can pass into Snowy Scale. And one of the variables you cannot pass into Snowy Scale is the password year. So unfortunately, you will have to put your password year in clear text. You need to make sure that this config file is secured. Um, and effectively, you just have your compute and your region. So this is my setup here, except obviously I have the password in there. And you can have multiples of these. You can also have multiple config files. So you may have a config file, let's just say for your test environment, you may have a config file for your dev environment, your prod environment, you may have different config files. Um, and these are all configurable in Bimalflex to say, hey, I wanna use this, this one, this one, this one. So you can configure this with environment variables and things. So you need to go ahead and set one of these uh, connections up here. 
And once you've set that up, we'll go and configure the rest of the stuff in Pimalflex. All right, configuring Snowflake in Pimalflex. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the same starting point as we did with the with the rest of the, with the other project here, and we're not going to focus on the data vault acceleration and all that stuff. We're just going to configure um, Snowflake as a starting point, and then you follow the same process as you would do with another project. You're just pointing it to a different source here. So let's go ahead here and just um, I've just got a brand new project here, nothing in it. So I'm going to go and load my sample data, and I'm going to load my sample data after I've imported. I'm not really going to go through the import process again. So I have now going to have my starting point here. So if I look at my connections or my projects here, you'll see that I have an extract. So this is just my source um, path here. So the one thing that is uh, going to be different in, well, in Snowflake is the first thing you want to do is go ahead and load uh, the defaults here. So you want to go ahead and load the, the Snowflake insert only defaults. Now Snowflake has been designed for an insert only architecture. Um, it doesn't really handle updates that that well, so you do want to have an insert-only architecture, so you don't really want to have end dating in your persistent staging. You can um, you can configure Bimalflex to do that, but it's not recommended by probably by us and by Snowflake. So you want to have an insert-only architecture into Snowflake, and that's when, when our pointing timetables and bridge tables, the way we've designed it, with, um, comes into handy if you're doing data vault. So we go ahead here and we say, okay, so now what we have is we have all of the... Uh, defaults loaded and just to give you an idea what I mean by that is if I go into configurations here and I'll just look at like the from that you'll see now that these SQL expressions here are compatible now with Snowflake so you know things like that and you know um, uh, let me have a look at another one here it's probably the ease deleted so you can see here that the um, the SQL expressions are you know snowflake compatible if you don't load those defaults you'll have the standard defaults which is more um, set up for sql server so you definitely want to go and load those defaults here the next thing we need to do is obviously go and configure our connections here and um, you can leave the projects and all of that kind of stuff for, uh, for now so but the key thing here is the source can stay the same we're still going to pull you know you're going to connect to your source system here and everything is going to be the same there but from the staging point of view here things are going to look a little differently now for the purpose of setting this up i find that this is actually a lot easier to do in the excel add-in so let me help over to the excel add-in the reason why i want to do that is i want to sort of set it up once and copy and paste it so let me go ahead over to the excel add-in and set that up okay so I've, um, i'm using a, our Pimalflex excel add-in here and this is great for when you want to do bulk operations our app is fantastic um, for you know modeling and managing your metadata but sometimes you want to just do you know copy and paste some stuff and then for that really there is no better tool than excel to do that so for bulk operations we've got the excel add in here so the first thing i'm going to do is we're going to go to metadata connection i'm going to connect to my database my customer here which is the the, the, the trial project and i'm going to connect to that version which is my snowflake version after i've said that i just basically grab a get all entities which goes to the database metadata database and extracts all the metadata for me i'll close that down and now i'll go to connections so as I said, you've got your source connection here, and you've then got your, you know, the rest of the sample metadata here. You always want to leave the Bimmel catalog in place because that's where we're going to log all the information. So we really want to set all of these guys up here. So the first thing we want to do is change this OLADB here to use ODBC um, SQL-based ELT. In other words, we're going to not use ETL, we're going to use ELT, and we're going to change the system type here to Snowflake. So I'm going to grab Snowflake from there, Snowflake Data Warehouse. And then you want to also set your catalog here, which is the database. I'm going to set it as Bimalflex, which is my database name inside of Snowflake is called Bimalflex. So this is whatever your Snowflake database is called. This is again where the Excel adding comes in handy. We just paste that down to the staging, RDP and ODS. And this is for sample metadata here. So again, you've got that, that set up there. And the only other thing you now need to do is actually go and change this um, connection string here. So I've got one that I've prepared earlier. So let me paste that one in here for you. And as I said, this, this is the DSM. In other words, this is the ODBC name, the name of the ODBC um, that you've set up, your user ID that you've used, and your password. So mine is obviously not this password, but you will put your password in here. And here's the database name. Um, it's good to put the database name in there. It's not compulsory, but this is if you want to import metadata. So let's just say you're going from source to staging, possibly data vault, maybe not data vault, 
but you are one you want to build a view that you're going to put into your snowflake database and that view is going to be the source for let's just say a data mart or it's going to be a source for something that you want to take through it could even be you know you've cleaned some data and you want to use that as a source for your data vault so if you want to do that and you want to import that metadata into Bomoflex again it's going to use this this connection string here again so obviously you want to just pop that down so you do want to have this um, connection string in here, but you may or may not use it. It's only really used in the app for importing metadata. Once you've done that, you've set all of that up, and that's it. Now your connections are configured the way they should be to go and use the rest of the demonstration. Now that we've set up the connections here, the only other thing we need to really go do at this stage is to go and set up the, or to configure the settings here. So I'm just going to get all settings here, which gets all the default settings for us. I'll head over to the settings tab and I'll filter this on Snowflake. And again, that's why the reason I'm using the Excel add-in here instead of our app is because I want to have this sort of overview of all my settings coming down here. So the top setting here, so where it says Snow SQL, that is actually configurations that points to the Snow SQL uh, files for you. So you're gonna have this user profile that it's Snow SQL config. You can have multiples of those. And what you would do is you would, and I'll show this to you in the app in a little bit here, when you want to override a configuration setting um, at a more granular level, you can go and, and add that setting. Um, the connection that you have to find in that Snow a config file and then where your Snow SQL path is. So we recommend leaving this all. So we've also given you some default settings here and I've, we've populated this with um, what, you know, one of our sort of Snowflake commands. Obviously the password is not a valid password, but I always like to have real information here so i can relate it if i just see a bunch of blanks I, you know you always question yourself so but effectively that's your account your username you put your password in the database that you want to connect to i leave the schema as public there um, because you define the schemas in other places the the sql whereas so i've got just compute whereas here you could have multiple whereas again you, we will show you later on how you can go find that at a different layer and then the region that you are in. The next little, uh, couple of settings that you have here is the Snowflake scale up. So do you want to, when you start your batch, do these these are to control you know the size and, and, and you know when you're doing your ETL. So those are your connections and these are your ETL. So basically when you run your batch, do you want to at the beginning of the batch, do you want to start up your Snowflake uh, compute warehouse? Do you want to scale it up? And if you want to scale it up, if this is set to yes, then you need to tell it what size you want to scale it up to. This could be medium, large, or whatever. And if you're using multiple compute warehouses, again, you can define this at a more granular level. Once your batch is finished, do you want to scale it down? And you, this may look a little bit intuitive, but let's just say you've got five batches and they all run on the same, or five you know, batches of ETL um, workloads. Um, you may want to configure that um, your first batch scales up your compute warehouse and your last batch scales it down. And that's why you've got this sort of setting here that you can override at a batch level. So you could say batch one, scale it up. Batch two or batch one, don't scale it down. Batch two, don't scale it up, don't scale it down. Three, don't scale it up, don't scale it down. Uh, let's stop at batch four. Well, batch four, don't scale it up, but scale it down. And then go and order suspend it. So you can configure it in that way there. Um, what is the uh, file format? We recommend using the defaults here. And then do you want to remove your staging t um, files? So obviously when Bimoflex loads your data into Snowflake, the first thing it does is it extracts the uh, data into parallel files, loads that up into Snowflake stage, and then run your ETL. We also, you then want to go and say, well, you want to actually then remove those stage table tables because if you don't remove them, the next time you load, it'll reprocess those files. So you need to you need to probably use leave this as yes. We recommend leaving these default and then maybe tweaking your scale up and scale down sizes. Let me head over to the Bimoflex app now and just show you how you can configure those settings here. So I'll just go and grab um, once you when you edit your metadata out in the Bimoflex um, add-in and you then go into the app. It's always a good idea to refresh your metadata from the database here to get the latest. But let's go have a look at a setting here. And I'm, again, I'm just going to scroll down here to one of the Snowflake settings here. So for this case here, I'm just going to go and look at the scale scale up. Right, um, it, it all works the same for all of these settings. But as you can see here, my scale up here is yes. I can go and add a default here to say I want to configure or override it at a batch level. And let's just look at it my, at my data vault batch. At my data vault batch, instead of it being yes, which it is there, 
I want to say no, I don't want to scale it up. So what this will mean is this will mean that this batch will not run the scale up process and I can save it. So now you have that so you have that batch override setting for you there. And that really is how it works. You know, you can have any one of these settings set at a global level, but then at a more granular level, you can go and override those.